It's now in its uh, first whole year. Uh, we launched it last year. We have distributed computers to all the kids, 11 and 12 year olds in Iceland. And uh, in collaboration with the National State Broadcaster, we are growing the uh, project, uh, I would say month by month, in terms of uh, engagement, in terms of students uh, using the computers, teachers getting involved, and so forth, so forth. So I would say that uh, we are in a pretty good and sweet spot. The first time I heard about the microbit was, in a way, a coincidence. Uh, a colleague or friend of mine who had worked on my primary election came to me and told me that uh, a relative of his was working on this project here in the UK. And uh, I in immediately became quite intrigued about it. And I asked him to uh, tell me about it. He was in Iceland at the time, and he came uh, for a meeting at my home. And uh, we came, well, I came to the conclusion that uh, I should call the BBC, ask them about it. I did that. This was in February 2016. And uh, we then uh, had meetings in the following months and became fully engaged in the spring. So it was a coincidence, but as many great things in life, they just happened like that. The reason why I thought that microbit could be important and useful in Iceland is that I had for a long time been thinking of, thinking of how I should introduce computer skills and programming skills into our school system. Uh, there are many obstacles in doing that. It's quite complicated thing. And uh, one thing, for example, was just uh, how we educate our teachers, how well they are prepared uh, to have this introduced into the national curriculum. So what I thought is that, well, this could be a chance to do without maybe too much of our preparation, in terms of we could use uh, their kids, their enthusiasm, uh, the way they just go along with things without nobody telling them, somebody telling them how they should do it. So what I thought about the microbit project was that it kind of met the criteria that we could do something and uh, be steered by what the kids would do with it. So uh, uh, that was kind of uh, got me really interested in the, in the project. Because when you have those really top-down uh, approaches, these, these heavy top-down projects and project management, the chances of things going wrong, wrong or not as you expected are actually quite high. But when you go bottom-up, like it is with the microbit micro project, where you have the kids and their involvement as your kind of a steering uh, wheel or leading guide, uh, then I think there is more probability of success. I would say that now, 12 months after we started this, it has been had a very positive result. The way to measure this is just to look at how many children are using this, how many children are uh, responding to the uh, challenges that are put forward on the website where this is embedded, how we are now linking this, for example, with entrepreneurship. Every year we have a competition for 10 to 12 year olds uh, as entrepreneur and they put forward their business plans and, and business ideas and we are kind of merging the micro bit into that competition for example. So it's, it's growing bigger and bigger by the month. Uh, so I think that we can be, we are in a very positive situation where we can make a very meaningful impact when it comes to making sure that children learn how to program. And I have to say that that is of utmost importance for us because we like all other nations, uh, faced with this huge challenge of technology and making sure that uh, the next generation will have, a, let's say, a competitive edge above what can be done with robots and machines. And uh, in order to do that, they need to be creative. And uh, to become creative, you need to learn a lot of skills. One really important skill to become a creative person in a modern society is to be able to program. I have to say that I was thinking when we started this uh, project that if we get to maybe 5 or 10% of the kids and get them started in programming, I would be tremendously happy. But uh, obviously we have gotten far more than these numbers, so I think that uh, when I try to assess where we stand on this project now, I would say that uh, it has exceeded our expectations, but there's still a lot of work to be done.